let us talk about your class in your class you have to be on your best behavior you have to respect your teachers and you have to talk to your classmates politely you have 30 students in your class and all of these other students also have the same responsibilities as you but let us assume that you don't do your maths homework for a day who is responsible for that and who would be punished only you right so even though you belong in a class you have individual responsibility for not completing your homework but if your class is supposed to do a presentation and it fails to do the presentation it is the entire class who is responsible for it and would be punished right so your class also has collective responsibility just like that the ministers in the executive of india also have individual and collective responsibility so they are individually responsible for the working of their various departments and they are collectively responsible because they form the executive of the country now in india we do not have separation of powers so the legislature has to keep a check on the working of the executive the executive that is the ministers have been given several positions and responsibilities and they are supposed to work as representatives of the people of the country and should serve the nation so these people are also responsible for their working to the legislature and ultimately to the citizens of the country the legislature or the parliament of india ensures ministerial responsibility by asking questions and by moving certain motions we've talked about these motions before the adjournment motion the censure motion or the no confidence motion through these measures the parliament can ensure ministerial responsibility now as we've already seen that ministerial responsibility can be of two types collective responsibility and individual responsibility so ministerial responsibility is the responsibility that the minister or the ministers have to the legislature and finally to the people of the country this is a very important matter for a parliamentary system of government because it ensures that the executive is accountable to the people they are collectively responsible because they form the government of the ruling party and they are the executive which runs the entire country so each minister forms part of the executive and thus they are collectively responsible to the lok sabha other than this since each of these ministers have separate departments or they work in separate departments and head the departments of the government therefore they also have individual responsibility to the president of the country so firstly as we've seen collective responsibility is that the council of ministers is collectively responsible to the lok sabha or the lower house of the parliament or the house of the people so the legislature or the lok sabha makes sure that the ministers have collective responsibility that they can ensure by asking questions and passing certain motions so any decision which has been taken or agreed to by the cabinet ministers has to be agreed to by all the ministers of the ruling government because it is the same government that they are a part of so if a minister does not agree or has a different opinion than that which has been decided by the ruling government then the minister can either reconsider and support the ruling government in their decision or they have to resign from their position because every person or every minister of the ruling government has to take the decision as their own and agree to it so for example in 2020 harsimrat kaur badal who was the minister of food processing industries resigned from her post because she did not agree to the government installing the new farm laws have you heard of the phrase the council of ministers swim and sink together 
This can be explained to understand the collective responsibility of the government. This means that if a law or an action that has been taken by the executive of the country is complimented or praised, then all the ministers can have the trust of the people and hold on to their positions, that is, they can swim. But if these laws or actions are being criticized or disregarded, then the entire ministry will be responsible for it and may be questioned and finally voted out. So, if the no confidence motion is passed against the ruling government, then all the ministers collectively will have to leave their positions because it shows that the government is not being trusted by the people of the country. But other than this collective responsibility, the ministers individually also have individual responsibility which means that these ministers are individually responsible for the working of their various departments. They might be individually questioned regarding their departments that they are a part of. The ministers are individually responsible to the president. This is written in the constitution. It means that if one of the ministers is becoming corrupt or using violence or he is going against the constitution and its laws or for any other reason, the president might ask him to resign from his position on advice of the prime minister of the country. So, as we have seen that they have individual responsibility as well. So, now can you answer this question? Who are the ministers individually responsible to? Is it the prime minister? the president, the vice president or the chief justice of India. Yes, the constitution says that they are individually responsible to the president. Now, in this video, we have talked about the council of minister and the cabinet very synonymously. But actually, they are quite different from each other. The council of ministers is the entire body of ministers while the cabinet is a small group of ministers who are just a part of the council of ministers. Let us see how the cabinet is different from the council of ministers. So the cabinet includes only ministers of cabinet rank. They are the most important or high position ministers such as the defense minister, the finance minister, the home minister and so on. But the council of ministers has the cabinet as a part and it also consists of other ministers of state as well as the deputy ministers. So as we have seen, all members of the council do not belong to the cabinet but all members of the cabinet belong to the council because the cabinet is just a part of the council. Other than this, According to the constitution, the council of ministers advise the president. This is what is written in the constitution. But in reality, it is the cabinet which advises the president and is in turn consulted by the prime minister for any information or advice. The reason is that the cabinet meets very frequently, but the entire council of ministers does not meet so regularly. Since the cabinet meets so frequently, it is the cabinet which advises the president through the prime minister and it is not actually the entire council of ministers who play a role in advising the president. Other than that, the council of ministers is a constitutional body. The council of ministers is a constitutional body which means that they are those bodies which have been established by the constitution of India. The mention of the council of ministers is there in the constitution. However, originally the agenda of the cabinet was not mentioned in the constitution. But it was later inserted in the constitution in 1978 during the 44th constitutional amendment. Now we know that the cabinet ministers will obviously attend all of the meetings of the cabinet or the cabinet meetings. But since the council of ministers do not only consist of the cabinet ministers, most ministers of the council do not regularly attend these meetings. 
so not all ministers of the council can attend the cabinet meetings most of them can attend only when they are invited however the cabinet ministers have the full right to attend the meetings of the cabinet so as we have understood from all of this that the cabinet ministers along with the ministers of state and the deputy ministers together constitute the council of ministers and the cabinet itself consists of senior ministers who hold very important portfolios and they have to take administrative decisions and the prime minister seeks their advice on very important matters so the cabinet only meets regularly and takes decisions which is considered as the decision of the executive so the council of ministers can be seen as this bigger circle in which there is a small part which is the cabinet the cabinet consists of only say 15 to 25 ministers who hold very important portfolios so in this video we've seen how the council of ministers is different from the cabinet and the cabinet forms a part of the council of ministers and we've also seen how all of the ministers have collective responsibility as well as individual responsibility through all of these processes it makes the executive function efficiently and run the government properly with having proper accountability to the people of the country don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn by games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now